What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to recap week one of the National Football League. Also, we're going to look ahead to week two, give you our power rankings, weekly picks, fantasy football advice, and have an opportunity to answer some of your questions that you guys have submitted. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Baby shark doo 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 doo. Um, my name is Hassan Khan. I am your wonderful host of the show, Time to Football. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Listen, guys. Listen. We've got a lot to get to right now. That is my least favorite line that anyone could ever say in this world. We've got a lot to get to right now. If you got a lot to get to right now, then get to it. That's just the phrase that people say when they have nothing else to talk about. And they're just trying to kill time. Because they get paid on YouTube by watch time minutes more than anything else. (laughs) Ha ha! See what I'm doing right now? Anyways, we do have a lot to get to right now. And we've got to recap week one of the National Football League. Um, But first, before we get into it, for you guys that are watching this video on YouTube, just know that we have a podcast up on the podcast app. Um, If you pull out your wonderful iPhone XS or XR, um, which was recently announced today, then you can go to the podcast app and you can search Time to Football, subscribe to us on there so you can listen to us on the go. But if you're listening to this on the podcast app, just know that we have a video podcast up on YouTube. I'm waving into the camera right now. And for you guys, like I gave you guys a visual last week, I'm going to give you a visual again. I am wearing um, the, you know, the traditional um, time of football blazer. For you guys that don't know, I wear this for every single video. Um, And a purple long sleeve button down shirt. I know. Sex appeal to the max. Um, But. We came out with a video yesterday on Tuesday talking about um, the players of the week. So to really recap week one, we want to get into these top performers that just balled out. Um, We came out with a video and kind of broke down the film of these players and why they were named um, the players of the week. So for you guys that are listening on the podcast app, you can't really see the video, Um But for you guys that are watching this video on YouTube, let's just go ahead and check in uh, with that video. Let's play it for you guys that haven't had a chance to watch it yesterday. And then we'll get back to you guys once it's done. Here are our players of the week for week one. We're going to name a few of these guys and we're going to start off with who else? Then the Amish rifle Ryan Fitzpatrick had a big week against the Saints. Play action right there. Boom! Completed to one of one Deshaun Jackson for the touchdown. Let's break down that play. You're going to see Jackson circled in the bottom of your screen being covered by cornerback Patrick Robinson. Fitzpatrick knows that this is zone defense. So after the play action, he sees Robinson let go of Jackson because his assignment is to cover down low. Fitzpatrick knows that the linebackers and the safeties can't catch up to Jackson. Throws a deep ball for the touchdown. He also did some work on the ground with his legs. You're going to see right here, Cameron Jordan is the guy that is circled on the bottom of your screen. That's because this is going to be a read pass option. He's going to fake it to Peyton Barber. And depending on what Cameron Jordan does, if Cameron Jordan pulls in and goes after Barber, then Fitzpatrick is going to keep it and run it into the end zone for the touchdown. But if Jordan stays, then he's going to hand it off to Barber and it's going to be a running play but let's just see what happens right here you see that Jordan bites on it he's going after the running back right there Fitzpatrick sees that and immediately by instinct pulls in the ball runs it in for the touchdown does magic with that amazing beard of his 21 of 28 417 yards four touchdowns passing one rushing touchdowns as you just saw there 156.3 QB rating but the most important stat He pulled off an improbable win against the favored New Orleans Saints, 48-40 in the Superdome. Our second player of the week is going to be Tyreek Hill. He did it all on offense, on special teams, 
Just a simple route right there. Patrick Mahomes completes it to Cheetah, but because of his speed, he can get away and run it in for the touchdown. Seven receptions, 169 yards, two receiving touchdowns, and one kick return touchdown, which was actually a 91-yard punt return for a touchdown. Our third player that we're going to highlight probably isn't going to get a lot of attention, but it's going to be Denzel Ward, the cornerback for the Cleveland Browns, the rookie cornerback who should have a good career if he plays like this. Two interceptions, Ben Roethlisberger rolls out to his right, Ward undercuts the route, gets the interception. Now let's break that down and see exactly what happened and why Ward is going to be a good corner for years to come. Ward on the top of your screen, it's a zone defense for the Browns, so whoever is in Denzel Ward's zone, he has to cover them. But Ward, the whole entire time, looks at Roethlisberger more so than he does the receiver that he's covering. He sees him in his peripheral vision. You see right there the zone that he's going to cover. But Roethlisberger's eyes are looking towards Antonio Brown. And as soon as the mannerisms show that he's going to throw towards Antonio Brown, Ward knows that. He takes the risk to go out of the zone and undercut the route and get the interception. Six tackles, two interceptions, and he led the Browns to a tie, 21-21 to versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. And our fourth player of the week is a bad man, Aaron Rodgers. The whole entire night, the Bears were rushing at least five to try to get pressure on Rodgers, but Rodgers could read the man coverage, throws a beauty of a pass to Devontae Adams over the Bears cornerback for a big game. Now, let's look at the game winner to Randall Cobb. Again, the Bears are going to rush five on this play. Rodgers knows that's man coverage, has some solid protection by the Green Bay offensive line, but look at the perfect ball placement by Rodgers to Randall Cobb, throwing it on the outside shoulder so that the defender cannot get to the ball. Only the best of the best can throw passes like these. And Cobb is going to get the completion, does wonders with yards after the catch, makes some defenders miss, and in for the game winner. And the Packers get that improbable comeback, down 20 to nothing. And Rodgers is our last player of the week. 20 of 30, 286 yards passing, three touchdowns, and he led the Packers to a 24 to 23 victory over the Chicago Bears. Fantastic job to those players of the week. Let's go ahead and get into uh, the week two storylines, the storylines that are revolving around this upcoming week or this upcoming slate of football games. And one of them involves one of the players of the week, and that was Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers is being evaluated for a knee injury right now. Head coach Mike McCarthy hasn't given word whether or not Rodgers is going to play. His um, his status for week two against the Minnesota Vikings is still in question. He's a day-to-day basis, but we'll keep an eye on that and see if he's going to start for you fantasy owners. That could be a big deal. The Patriots signed Corey Coleman to a one-year deal. So Corey Coleman is on his third team in 2018. He was with the Cleveland Browns. Then he got traded to the Buffalo Bills, didn't make the 53-man roster, and the Patriots brought him in for a workout along with the Philadelphia Eagles. But the Patriots are the ones that eventually signed Corey Coleman to a one-year deal. More injury news, Greg Olson, the Panthers' tight end, refractures his foot that he fractured last year. This is actually devastating news for him. Um, to have the same injury in the same foot. Um, He's going to be out multiple weeks. It's not a given whether or not he's going to be out for the rest of the year, but the Panthers are hopeful that he can come back later in the season just in time for the playoffs. Another big injury, Doug Baldwin, partial tear in his knee. So this isn't as bad as Greg Olson, but Doug Baldwin is expected to miss at least two to three weeks. A lot of other injury news as well. Jeremy Hill, the Patriots running back um, towards ACL. He's out for the year. Delaney Walker, the Titans tight end. He broke his ankle. He's out for the year, placed on IR. Um, But going to another signing, another wide receiver, just like Corey Coleman, he was signed to a team, to a one-year deal, but he was brought back to his former team, and that is Martavis Bryant. So Bryant was released after he was given... um, It was given word that more than likely he's going to be suspended for the next year. But the NFL hasn't decided whether that's official or not just yet. Until then, Bryant is cleared to play. And the Patriots, or or I'm sorry, the the Raiders need a lot of help in the receiving core. 
So the Raiders brought in Bryant, a familiar face back, and he is expected to play in week two against the Denver Broncos. Now we're going to get into the power rankings for this week ahead of week two games. Starting off with number 32, we've got the Buffalo Bills. They haven't moved anywhere. They're still the worst team in the NFL. It was ugly against the Baltimore Ravens. They stay at number 32. Number 31, the Colts drop a spot because they failed to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Originally, they were ranked number 30. Couldn't pull off a win, so they dropped to number 31. The Arizona Cardinals, this is a big drop for them. They were ranked number 26, but after that abysmal performance against the Washington Redskins, barely scoring any points against them, they drop to number 30. Next, we got the Cleveland Browns at number 29. They don't move. They stay at 29. A tie is a tie. It's not a win. It's not a loss. But it actually is a big moral victory for the Browns moving forward. At 28, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who would have expected that they would pull off the upset against the New Orleans Saints? They go up three spots. 27, the Oakland Raiders. Not a lot is going for them. They drop a couple spots after that ugly loss to the LA Rams. 26, the Miami Dolphins, up two spots after a big win against the Tennessee Titans. 25, the New York Jets, Sam Darnold looking like a seasoned pro in his debut, upsetting the Detroit Lions. 24, the Chicago Bears drop a spot after giving up that lead that that could have easily won them the game. It's not so much that they dropped a spot because of the strength of the opponent, because we know the Green Bay Packers are a tough team to beat. But giving up a lead that big, that's why I dropped them a spot. 23, the Dallas Cowboys, they dropped significantly, not because the Carolina Panthers were the team that they lost to, because the Panthers are a tough team, but just the performance that they had, it was terrible on offense. And they've got to get a lot of things going for them on offense if they want to move on up to the top 20. On 22, we've got the Denver Broncos. Up two spots after upsetting the Seattle Seahawks. They go up to number 22. 21, the San Francisco 49ers drop a couple spots after losing to the Minnesota Vikings. 20, the Tennessee Titans drop four spots. This is big because, again, it's not based off of the strength of the opponent because the Miami Dolphins are ranked lower in the power rankings, actually, than the Tennessee Titans. But because of their offense not clicking, not getting anything done, um, they drop a few spots because of that. At 19, the Cincinnati Bengals. Like we've been saying, the Bengals are a better team than you think. Up three spots after beating the Colts. The New York Giants come in at number 18. Drop a spot after losing to the Jacksonville Jaguars. 17, the Washington Redskins up four spots. This is a big jump for them because they looked great on offense, on defense. Granted, it was against the Cardinals, but they looked great last week. 16, we've got the Seattle Seahawks drop a spot after losing to the Denver Broncos. 15, the Detroit Lions, 48 to 17 loss against the New York Jets is going to drop you in the power rankings. 14, the Chiefs move on up four spots into the top 15 after the Patrick Mahomes show and Tyreek Hill did their work against the LA Chargers. 13, the Houston Texans, an ugly loss against the uh, the New England Patriots. Granted, it is the Patriots, but they drop a spot because they lost. 12, the LA Chargers drop a couple spots because they lost to a team that was ranked lower to them in the power rankings, the Kansas City Chiefs. 11, the Atlanta Falcons. I had to drop them down three spots, had to get them out of the top 10 because this past week against the defending Super Bowl champions, you would expect their offense to click a little bit more, even against a tough defense like the Eagles, but nothing clicked for them. It was just Julio Jones and their offense, so that's why they dropped three spots. 10, the Baltimore Ravens move on up to the number 10 spot in the top 10 after that demanding victory against the Buffalo Bills. At nine, the Panthers move up a couple spots after beating the Dallas Cowboys. At eight, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers move on up one spot after that comeback against the Chicago Bears. At seven, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they stay. They don't move a spot. They don't move up. They don't move down. A tie is a tie. Six, the New Orleans Saints. Drop them out of the top five. They were originally number four, but I dropped them down to number six because of that loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Number five, moving on up to the top five is the Jaguars. They move on up one spot. For the Minnesota Vikings, after a win, they were number five last week. They move on up to number four. Number three, the LA Rams, demanding victory against the Oakland Raiders. Number two, the New England Patriots, won against the Houston Texans. And number one, and number one, the Philadelphia Eagles. Listen, like we've been saying this whole time, to be the man, you've got to beat the man. And until someone beats the man, the defending Super Bowl champions, the Philadelphia Eagles, are number one in our power rankings. Now we're going to get into weekly picks. So just like last week we mentioned, if you haven't watched uh, last week's episode, what we do with weekly picks is that we put up polls on Instagram every Tuesday. And we let you guys decide, the fan, decide who you guys think are going to win each game. This is an hour rankings. Uh, this, you know, these aren't our weekly picks. These are all of you guys. You guys have the power in deciding who you guys think will win each game. So let's go ahead and tune in and let's see who you guys think are going to win each game in week two. Starting off with a Thursday night game, the Baltimore Ravens versus the Bengals. 75% of you think that the Ravens are going to continue their momentum and beat the Bengals at home. An NFC South battle, the Panthers versus the Falcons. You guys believe this is going to be a close one. 48% of you believe that the Panthers are going to win. And 52% of you believe that the Falcons are going to beat the Panthers at home. The Colts versus the Redskins, 33% favor the Colts, 67% favor the Redskins. The Texans versus the Titans, 71% of you believe that the Texans are going to beat the Titans. And 29% of you believe that the Titans are going to win. The Eagles versus the Buccaneers, despite that upset from last week, this is lopsided. The Buccaneers, 14%. Only favoring the Buccaneers to win. 86% have the Philadelphia Eagles on the road beating the Buccaneers. The Chiefs versus the Steelers. 31% are going with the Chiefs. 69% are going with the Steelers. The Dolphins versus the Jets. The Dolphins, 44%. The Jets, 56% are going with Sam Darnold. The Chargers versus the Bills. 60% are going with the Chargers. 40% the Bills, which actually I'm kind of surprised because after last week's performance, I would think more people would be going for the Chargers to win, but only 60% of you are. You guys think this is going to be a closer game than expected. Vikings versus Packers, arguably one of the games of the week. 55% of you like the Minnesota Vikings. 45% are going with the Green Bay Packers. The Browns versus Saints. Now the Saints, are they still a good team? The Browns, are they a better team from last year? 43% of you, surprisingly, are going for the Browns. 57% are going with the Saints. The Lions versus the Niners. 44% of you like the Lions. And the 49ers are favored to win this game based off of 56% of your votes. The Cardinals versus the Rams. This is one of those lopsided games. The Rams are favored to win at home. 78% of you like the Rams to win against the Cardinals, who 22% of you are favoring the Cardinals. The Patriots versus the Jaguars. 64% of you are favoring the Patriots versus the Jaguars. 36%. Let's see what's going to happen. It's a rematch of the AFC title game from last year. The Giants versus the Cowboys. 60% of you like the New York Giants. Still believe in that offense. 40% of you like the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry's World. The Seahawks versus the Bears. The Monday night game for the Seahawks. 73% of you are favoring them to win and only 27% are favoring the Chicago Bears. In the last game, the Oakland Raiders versus the Denver Broncos. 47% of you like John Gruden and the Oakland Raiders and 53% like the Denver Broncos with Case Keenum at helm. Now we're going to get into fantasy football advice for week two. Players that you should start and sit. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about something it's so, it's so incredible. I don't know what those sounds were. I will never make those sounds ever again in my life. But something so incredible for time to football. And that is Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way that you can sponsor your favorite content creator. I'm telling you, everyone uses Patreon, whether it's a YouTuber a podcaster, a videographer, 
a content creator of any sort, you could go to patreon.com and search their name and sponsor them every single month. It's kind of like a GoFundMe, but you pledge every single month. So for us at Time to Football, we started this um, in the off season and we're promoting it every single week because we believe that it's going to gain steam and we believe that you guys um, are fueling us and, and you guys decide which content that you want to see. So if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, you can kind of read up on all the content and all of the um, projects that we have planned where your money goes towards because I know giving money is kind of an iffy topic. But you can kind of read up and get security on knowing that, hey, all this money, it doesn't go in my pocket. Personally, it, it goes towards time to football and growing time to football. Um, so patreon.com slash time to football, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time, the number two, football. If you give as little as $3 a month, then you can earn rewards. We have perks for as little as $3 a month. But if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, you can read up on what all those perks are. Patreon.com slash time to football. Time now for our fantasy football must starts and must sits for week two. Starting at quarterback, must start Phillip Rivers versus the Bills, Alex Smith versus the Colts, and Jared Goff versus the Cardinals. Must sit Dak Prescott versus the Giants, Ryan Fitzpatrick versus the Eagles, and Blake Bortles versus the Jets. Running backs, must start Christian McCaffrey versus the Falcons, James Conner versus the Chiefs, and Jordan Howard versus the Seahawks. Must sit Jamal Williams versus the Vikings, Marshawn Lynch versus the Broncos, and Chris Carson versus the Bears. Wide receivers must start Juju Smith Schuster versus the Chiefs, Golden Tate versus the 49ers, and Nelson Aguilar versus the Buccaneers. Must sit Amari Cooper versus the Broncos, Kelvin Benjamin versus the Chargers, and Devin Funches versus the Falcons. Tight ends must start George Kittle versus the Lions, Jordan Reed versus the Colts, and Evan Ingram versus the Cowboys. Must sit Will Disley versus the Cardinals, Tyler Eifert versus the Ravens, and Eric Ebron versus the Redskins. Kickers must start Chris Boswell versus the Chiefs, Brandon McManus versus the Raiders, and Robbie Gould versus the Lions. Must sit Matt Prater versus the 49ers, Graham Gano versus the Falcons, and Sebastian Janikowski versus the Bears. Defense and special teams must start the Chargers versus the Bills, the Texans versus the Titans, and the Jets versus the Dolphins. Must sit the Vikings versus the Packers, the Falcons versus the Panthers, and the Chiefs versus the Steelers. So we're going to go more in depth with this fantasy football device. We're going to highlight one player as the start of the week and one player as the sit of the week for each position. Let's start off with the quarterbacks and the start of the week for that is Phillip Rivers versus the Bills. Last week he put up 28 fantasy points against the Kansas City Chiefs. Granted, I know that most of that was in garbage time, but just having the ability to do that, to put up 28 points, lets us know that he's a must-start against a weak Buffalo Bills defense that's arguably the worst team in the NFL right now. And the sit of the week is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Against the Philadelphia Eagles, the defending Super Bowl champions, this is going to be tough for Fitzmagic. Don't chase the fantasy points. He had a great performance against the the New Orleans Saints, arguably the best performance of his entire career, but don't bite into it. Fitzpatrick versus the Eagles defense is a must set. For the start of the week at running back, we've got James Conner. You can't help but to cheer for this guy. Just listening to the story about how he battled cancer and now he's a starting running back for the Steelers. If he had fantasy performances like last week against the Kansas City Chiefs, this week he's definitely a must start. Um, The Chiefs defense gave up a lot of fantasy points to the running back position last week against Melvin Gordon, against Austin Eckler, so James Conner is a must start. The sit of the week, Jamal Williams versus the Vikings. Not only is it a tough defense for the Minnesota Vikings, but for the Packers, it's it's, it's a timeshare with Ty Montgomery and Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams comes in more so for for passing downs, for um, he's, he's 
much more the better pass blocker out of the running backs for the Green Bay Packers. So he's not going to get a lot of carries in itself. So he's a must set for the Minnesota Vikings or, or when he's facing the Minnesota Vikings. For wide receivers, Nelson Aguilar is the start of the week. Eight receptions, 33 yards last week against Atlanta Falcons. 33 yards isn't impressive by any means, but just the amount of receptions and targets that he was seeing. Not only that, but he was heavily used in the Eagles playbook. He was used as a runner. He was used as a passer in that uh, Philly special play that we saw last week. And against a Buccaneers defense that gave up 40 points last week, Aguilar is a must start. And Amari Cooper is the sit of the week against the Denver Broncos. Listen, guys, I want it to work out as badly as as you guys do. But I'm not sure that Amari Cooper can go back to fancy relevance anytime soon. He plays in the AFC West. He has a tough schedule. The Denver Broncos has a good defense. So it's tough. For now, he's matchup based. And this matchup against the Broncos, it's going to be a tough one. Sit him on your bench. Tight ends. Start of the week, George Kittle. I really love this guy. Five receptions, 90 yards. Jimmy Garoppolo threw a ball that was just over his head in the end zone. Other than that, this guy is athletically gifted. He's really fast. He he can do wonders for um for the San Francisco 49ers. They saw an injury to Marquise Goodwin. So if he misses any time or if any receivers miss any time by that by any means, then Kittle is going to be heavily involved in the past game. Sit of the week, Will Disley. Listen, I'm telling you, just like Ryan Fitzpatrick, don't go chasing those fancy points. 105 yards, one touchdown last week against the Broncos. That was awesome, but can he do it again? It was based off of three receptions, which doesn't give you a lot of security. I would sit him for this week, especially against the top five defense in the Chicago Bears. For kickers, the start of the week is Robbie Gold. And the reason I like him a lot is because it dates back to last year. Ever since Jimmy Garoppolo came into town for the 49ers, this offense has been better. Robbie Gold has been better. They've been into field goal range a lot. And against the Lions, where they gave up so many field goals to Jason Myers and the New York Jets, you got to like Robbie Gold's chances to get you a lot of fancy points this week. And the set of the week is Graham Gano. Not so much because of Gano and the type of kicker that he is, but because of the Falcons. On their home field last year, at least, the Falcons gave up on average just four fancy points a game to kickers. That's that doesn't sound optimistic at all. So I would uh, sit Graham Gano for now and start someone else. Defensive special teams: the LA Chargers are the start of the week against the Buffalo Bills. I know that they gave you negative fancy points and would have been better just to leave them on your bench last week than to really start a defense at all. But at this point, any team that faces the Buffalo Bills is a must-given. It's the start of the week. For the sit of the week, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Panthers. I like the Panthers' offense. I like the Falcons' defense. I believe that they're a top 10, top 15 defense. But with so many injuries to Keanu Neal, to Deion Jones, Tack McKinley was even hurt last week. I'm not really optimistic on the Falcons' defense. So until said otherwise, until proven that they can be a top 10 defense, I would just go ahead and sit the Falcons and go with the streamer defense if you have a chance so now we've got something fun planned for you guys and that's fan questions so if you watched last week's episode you saw that um we we mentioned that we're giving you an opportunity to submit your questions and we're going to answer it on air so you guys took to instagram submitted your questions i haven't really looked at this um but I, i i haven't had a chance to write down my answers really prepare for this so all the answers that i'm going to give to you is authentic so um, whatever question it is, whether it's football related, personal life related, whatever it is, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to give you a shout out because you took the time to submit a question. So first question, and we start off with a bang, actually. Um, do you eat ass? At King underscore dot Fletch. You know, that's kind of personal. Um that's that's I don't I don't know how to you know I nah nah I don't nah I don't I don't do that. Um question two is Le'Veon Bell playing a single snap as a stealer this season? Hashtag Viva Mexico at Tony underscore Manzanero. So 
if James Conner didn't have the performance that he had in week one, I believe Bell would come back and play for the Steelers. But since Conner had the performance, I don't think the Steelers even want Bell at this point. They're happy with Conner, and there's so much hostility with the Steelers, with the locker room, and Le'Veon Bell. So if Le'Veon Bell comes back to collect that game check, he has a lot of balls, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and if he comes back to play, well, he, he's going to have to expect a timeshare because James Conner just submitted himself as a number one back with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That'd be an amazing running back duo, Le'Veon Bell and James Conner. But uh, if, if I was his agent, I think his agent is telling him, hey, rest for this season. They've got James Conner. There's no point of going back. Rest for the season. Test the free agent market um, for next year. So to answer your question, I don't think he's going to play a single snap. Um, Indianapolis Colts, I'm looking at you if you want a running back for next year. How many rushing yards do you think Saquon Barkley will get next week at King Athlete underscore 80? He had 108 last week against the Jaguars, but most of that came from a 60-plus yarder. I'm going to say 80 to 90 against the Cowboys. Your favorite football team at Edmund Too Good For You. The Atlanta Falcons um, are my favorite football team. Grew up in Atlanta my whole life. This show is based out of Atlanta. Um, and, you know, it, we, we've, we're diehard Atlanta Falcons fan. We're not biased by any point. We can give credit where credit's due. Um and we can critique the Falcons whenever we need to. Um, but I can tell you as an Atlanta Falcons fan, just seeing the whole city of Atlanta gathered together, rallying around this team when they went to the Super Bowl, it was amazing. There was a lot of fan pride. And I know that we lost, but um, it, it was it was good for the community of, of Atlanta. Um, and for us to lose that Super Bowl 28-3, you know, going into work the next morning, you could feel it. Not just with me, but like with everybody. Everybody was depressed and the whole city was just down and just seeing, you know, just the day before all these jerseys like outside of stores on sale and then Monday morning you go into work and then they just take off all these jerseys. Um, so really to answer your, your team, the Atlanta Falcons, um, hopefully we can get back to the Super Bowl next year. This year would be awesome um, in this in, with the Super Bowl being in Atlanta. Um, which for you guys, time football fans, we've got a lot of videos planned for you guys centered around that. Since we're in Atlanta, we're going to go down to the Mercedes Benz stadium during media day, grab all these, all, all this footage and it's going to be great. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay up to date with that. Who's the oldest player in the NFL at Bar- Barrigan? Gosh, these, these are tough names to pronounce at Barrigan 885 for the brand, Adam Vinatieri, Indianapolis Colts kicker. Um, do you eat ass? He asked it another time. He asked it twice. I don't know why. How do you feel about Aaron Rodgers clutching the dub against the Bears? TK Rome, four. It was phenomenal. Um, just being a fan and watching that game, seeing the Packers come back and win in 24 to 23. Gosh, it only the best of the best can do that. And it, it, it just as a, as a fan, it was great. And that's why they paid on the big bucks. And that's why he's one of the greatest of all time. I say one of the greatest of all time. So don't, you know, get your underwear in a wad. One of the greatest of all time. Um, Who do you think should start at QB for Cleveland? People are saying that if Baker Mayfield was in that game instead of Terod, then the Browns would have won against the Steelers. It's tough to say. Terod didn't have a bad showing. He had an interception. He had a, a low completion percentage, but two touchdowns, one against... Um, or one in the air, one on the ground. Um, and given the the weather conditions and the team, the talent level that he was facing, he did pretty good. So um, I think for now, if the Browns are smart, they stick with Terod. Um, Baker, I don't think he should come in unless Terod has a poor f- performance, uh, meaning worse than what he did against the Steelers. If he gets hurt or if... Uh, you know, they're out of playoff contention. It's week, you know, whatever, week 15, week 16, and they just want to give Baker some playing time. Uh, but for now, to Rod, I think he should be the starter. Are you single from I am JoJo Patton? I wonder who this guy is. Um, You know, for you, I am, but um, outside of you, I am not. I am taken. 
Um, by the most wonderful woman in the world. Can I just brag on her for a bit? Get personal a bit. She's very supportive with time and football in my career endeavors. Um, so I, I just wanted to throw that out. Love you, Sarah. Um, and the last question, what's your favorite Super Bowl since 2000? Huh. There's been some good ones. Um, I think the greatest Super Bowl of all time, even though, and, and this is me as a Falcons fan saying this, I think that 28 to three comeback was the greatest Super Bowl of all time with you, you got to see greatness with Tom Brady coming back third quarter with being down by that much. Um, it, it, it puts you on the edge of your seat, whether you're a Falcons fan, Patriots fan, or just a fan of, of the NFL. Um, I would say that's the greatest Super Bowl of all time. Um, and that was, even though the Falcons lost, it, it, it still is my personal favorite just as a football fan. Um, so Super Bowl 51 would be my favorite. Another one I wanted to give a shout out, um, the New York Giants upsetting the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 52, just because it, it, it was, everything was 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 projected and trajectory trajected towards the Patriots winning that Super Bowl. Robert Kraft put in a um, trademark for the term 19-0 and 0, um, and people were, weren't giving the Giants a chance. They were a, a, a 13 to 14 point underdog. Um, but just to pull off that upset with that catch um, against uh, uh, one of the greatest of all time against a super team, a dynasty, a quarterback that that wasn't given a chance, Eli Manning, your average quarterback. It, it, it's literally a fairy tale story, and one, it, it, it's a story, a game that you would read in fairy tales and and and, and books and fiction books, and um, I believe that was that was my favorite Super Bowl, just because of the upset that was pulled um, with the New York Giants, um, the underdogs not given a chance, but. As far as like actual on your seat, waiting to see what happens next, I give it to Super Bowl 51. Wow, I talked much longer than I needed to, but that's because I was trying to waste time because I get paid by the minute. Ha ha ha! Gotcha. Um, but I guess we're done. That's it. We're done for this video. Wow. Thank you for tuning in for the uh, uh, the very first week two 2018 um podcast for the show i say very first because it's the only one that's ever going to happen in history um but make sure you guys subscribe to this channel on youtube hit that subscribe button if you're watching this video on youtube if you're listening to this podcast on itunes make sure you go over to youtube hop on on there and hit that subscribe button um, but when you hit the subscribe button, regardless, hit that little bell icon right next to it so you can get notifications whenever we come out with videos. We come out with videos um, all the time. Come out with this show every Wednesday at 8. We come out with, um, you know, fantasy football videos, power ranking videos, um, player of the week videos. But if you're on YouTube, head over to the podcast app, search Time to Football, all one word, the number two instead of the word two and subscribe to us on there so you can listen to this on the go follow us on instagram at time to football we're very interactive with you guys you can submit fan questions through instagram vote on polls that we show on this uh show through instagram so um thank you guys again for really being supportive and tuning in every single week and let's see what happens in week two of the national football league we'll catch you next week Boom! Take care.